Go away. No can do. You know, I got a hunch that these guineas don't want us around here. I'm going to give this village one more chance. See that house? I'm going to get in there and tear it down. Open up inside. We're friends. We're off a long trail. We're tired and hungry. We'll pay. Vamoose, get out. You two boys stop playing games long enough to tell me what this is all about? Quit that, Bolt. Well, mister? Just teaching him manners, ma'am. This village seems to have strange notions of etiquette. Strikes me you've got rather original manners yourself. Is this your usual introduction? I'm sorry. I lost my temper. My name is Emerson. Boyd Emerson. Mine's Malott. Cherry Malott. I'm boss around here. Did you say the name was Cherry Malott? That means something to you, mister? Why, no, 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 ma'am. I, I got a terrible bad memory for names. This is George Bolt. Behave, George. George is, well, he's my watchdog. He was acting under my orders. We'll try to make up for our bad manners if you'll stay to dinner, will you? Let me have a look after your dog. I'd forgotten what decent linen felt like. And the touch of pure crystal takes a gentle refinement like myself to appreciate a swell layout like this. After the trail, it's like a dream of peace. <laughs> it's about as peaceful as smoking a cigarette on a keg of dynamite. You've walked into a neat little knockdown and drag out, mister. Is that why I got the chilly reception? They thought you were on my side, and both thought you were on theirs. You see, the salmon syndicate owns this town of Calvick, their chief fishing port, salmon. And the village has orders not to give shelter even to a dying man. But it's against every decent law of the North Country. Syndicate's afraid strangers will come, find gold or copper, and stampede the workers away from the fishery. And they're trying to force you out? Fair means are foul. Mostly foul. But they wouldn't harm you, a woman. Wouldn't they, though? The man who owns the syndicate considers murder just an incident of business. Fred Marsh. Some gay, nice and strong. Hey, He tried to steal my fishing place. You see my cannery shed out there? It ain't got no machinery in it on account of Morse. He wrecked my boat. Sir, sure, be quiet.
I simply can't understand it. How a woman used to, well, things like this, chooses to live in this North Country, endure its hardships and violence. Oh, I rather enjoy it at times. And other women have done it. Yes. Other women. But not. Excuse me for changing the subject, but may I trouble you to slip me the preserved peaches? Say, are you kicking me for any special reason, mister? No, no. Oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, I meant to kick him. That is, I mean, I... Pardon my glove. Queer partner for a young fellow like you. Neither one of us can afford to be too finicky. I picked him up on the trail just about all in, three days ago. I fancy he could arrange board and lodging. You mean in some jail? I'm afraid so myself. What the, what the? Oh, I think you're so smart just because you're bigger than me. And her, playing la -de da music to him like some society day. <laughs> Wait till he finds out who Cherry Malot is. You know, huh? You think you'll tell? Not me, brother. Not me. I ain't saying a word. Been having a tough time, mister? I guess they've been kicking you around, haven't they? Feel like talking about it? There's nothing much to talk about. I thought I could beat this North Country and it beat me. That's all. Gold mining? It's a tough game. But stay with it, you'll get a break. I've had breaks. The wrong kind. Two years of breaks. I've had enough. It's tough, but there's something more to life than rolling up a pile of money. Oh, I know, it sounds like something out of a copybook. But there's something bigger than finding a gold mine, and that's finding yourself. Well, I'd need a guide to find even myself. You've got some pretty good guides in this country, mister. Oh, it isn't so easy to quit. Quitting can be harder than hanging on. But I'm through. Don't say that. I don't believe it. You're just tired. Things will look brighter in the morning. Brace up, mister. I'll be just as broke in the morning. Broke? What of it? I guess you've never been broke. Cold, stony broke. And you've got another guest coming. Now, I've been so broke, a dime would have looked as big as a soup plate. You won out, though. I guess you do need a guide. Money is easy to get. Too darned easy. Tell me, 
What would you do to get money? Ask me what I wouldn't do. Just give me a chance. You know, I think I will at that. Of course, it ain't none of my business, but we've been here ten days now. Eating regular, Richard. Am I squawking? Uh. Uh. Only I'm worried to count of how they go out together every morning. And they're gone all day. That was a run. Does things to the old body, doesn't it? And I thought I never wanted to see a dog sled again. Come on, let's tell the boys. Hello, fellas. I got some good news for you. Walt, shake hands with your new partner. Him? My partner? Listen, Walt. You've got the best fishing site in Alaska. Yeah. But you need money to put machinery in that canning shed of yours. $200,000. Boyd's going to get it for you. Do you remember Tom Hilliard? Tom? Yeah. Tom Hilliard was a gnome. He was a banker, but a good man anyway. Well, Tom's in Seattle now. That's where Boyd's going, and you're going with him. Boyd will get the money, you'll buy supplies, and round up your fishing gang. You mean it? You won't be scared of rough work. Will you fight? Will you fight dirty? The dirtier, the better. You'll have your hands full in Seattle with Bolt. He's never been in the city before. So long, Fraser. You're going on a strange trail this time, Bolt. You mind Emerson, Savvy? Jerry. Why are you doing it for me? You may be cussing me before you're through. It's not because, because you're sorry for me. Sorry? For a big, healthy bohunk like you? You've put me on my feet. You've helped me find myself. Well, I'm just pointing out the way. You've got to fight the trail yourself. Goodbye, Boyd. Good luck. I'm afraid I'm being a darn fool. Yes, ma'am. Kind of loud, ain't it? Loud? It's class, big fella. Would I steer you wrong? Look at me. But that skimmer, huh? It's terrible. Oh, listen. All my life I always wanted a hat like this. Oh, gee. Well, I'm glad I noticed this. Huh? Our next stop will be a manicure parlor. You mean one of them places where women cleans your fingernails and shines them up? Oh, gosh, I don't want it. Oh, big oh, I'd be a hick all your life. do that, honest. A woman fooling around my fingers? I, I, I tell you what I'll do. 
I'll go back to the hotel and wash my own hands. Oh, wash and go. Well, that settles that, I guess. The loan will be put through, and 200000 placed to your credit for the end of the week. And I can go ahead and order my machinery, charter the boat? You've been mighty generous about this, Mr. Hilliard. Nonsense. It's only that I happen to be familiar with conditions up there. Uh, by the way, how's Cherry? Uh, that is, Miss Malott. Remarkable woman, isn't she? Well, she's been a great pal to me, Mr. Hilliard. A real friend. The kind of pal one man is to another. Yes, of course. Uh, quite so. Uh, man to man, you might say. I'll see you in a couple of days, then. Thanks again. So long. Dorothy. Yes. Brother, you got a pair of mitts. If you ever had your fortune told, you'd have to hire three palm readers. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we're both big, strong, silent men from them open spaces. Oh. Look, lady, you didn't do this one so good. You don't want them too shiny. I want mine too shiny. Do that way again with a little shoe brush, eh? <laughs> so this is where you hot sports hang out. This is his third manicure since noon. Well, I've been looking all over for you. We go to work tomorrow. Me? Work? Got the money from Tom Hilliard? And you can start buying your machinery and supplies and rounding up that fishing gang of yours. See you in the morning. Early. So long. He's kind of grand, ain't he? He's my secretary, sort of. Oh. Say, how about you and me making the sirloin steak look ridiculous? After you get through shoeing this horse. I'm simply a wrap-up for strong, silent guys. Hey, lady, you forgot this one. It's romantic, of course, but you can't really marry him, dear girl. Emerson is still a pauper. You're just being one of these fussy, old-fashioned fathers. Alas, I'm afraid it's the fate of fathers to seem old-fashioned and fussy. Boyd's not after my money. More's the pity. And we could be happy without a penny. You don't really believe that, old girl, do you? Well, no, to be entirely truthful. You're used to pennies. You're spoiled, my precious lamb, and downright selfish because you want me to marry Freddy, isn't it, old boy? Well, to be entirely truthful. I won't, do you hear? I won't marry Freddy. I don't care if he is your friend. I come, tell you come I now, care. comfort of my declining years. Welcome, Freddy, old boy. Just been discussing you. Not too unkindly, I trust. I've just been saying I wouldn't marry you on a bet, Freddy. But why not? Because her father favors it, of course. You should have a little respect for your father's wishes. Why well, have? Darn little. <laughs> That's all right, Walter. I'll find the way. The conquering hero. Hello, Emerson, my boy. Glad to see you again. Freddy, I'd like you to meet Mr. Emerson. You've heard us speak of him. Boy, this is Mr. Marsh. Frederick Marsh. And this is the young man who went to seek his fortune in Alaska. Found it, I trust. While looking for it, I had the pleasure of trying to find shelter in your town, Calvick. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to take our steps to discourage competitors. Well, this time you encouraged one. I might as well tell you right now, Mr. Marsh. I'm going to run a fishery at Calvick. That's interesting. But I doubt if you'll get financial backing for such a scheme. Then you may be surprised to find that I've already arranged for credit. Today, right in this town, and my fishery won't fail, and no crooked work will make it fail. Why, boy. Good. And good luck to you. If there's anything I can do to help you, any little bit of advice, why? In every, sir. What a infant. 
You know, I am terribly afraid he's not going to succeed at the fishing game. You know, so am I. Terribly. <laughs> Gang, huh? All college men, ain't they? By golly, we don't want no sissies in this gang. That's Spencer. He's the boss. You don't tell me. I thought he was the music teacher. Spencer's a pretty good scrapper. Only he weakened. It's all right for the first hour, oh, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. But after that, he gets tired. Just a bit quitter, huh? That's why I lick him every spring. Is it a habit? You two guys fighting every year? You've got to lick him, otherwise the men won't work for me. That's the rule of the fishing gang. They only take orders from the best scrapper. Eh? Oh. Ah, Spencer. By golly, that was a good fight we have. You licked me plenty. And I can do it again, you monkey-faced buttonhead. Next time I think I'll lick you. <laughs> By golly, you are getting to be a dude. Dude, huh? Listen, you pig-eyed pot walloper. My friend, just saying you look so ladylike, he thought you played one of them, uh, you curved, uh, uh, mandolin. Who said that? <laughs> no, I didn't know. No, I didn't fix now, boss. No, I didn't listen. Get back on your job, you big pig. Get my two back up there. And stay there. Hey, partner. Say the good word and we sail tonight. It's all off. We're whipped. Well, we're loaded, ain't we? Well, we're not sailing. Hilliard stopped our credit. We can't pay for any of that stuff. We can't even keep our ships chartered. But Hilliard polished it. Well, something made him change his mind. He said his board of directors wanted more time to look into it. Oh, that's a stall, like one of them conferences. It was Marsh. Oh, take it easy now. It's not Marsh. Not Marsh alone. He couldn't stop every bank in this town. And I've been to all of them. It was Marsh. He waited till we got in the hole. Oh, someday nice and slow. And I'll say, excuse me, please, Mr. Marsh. Oh, snap out of it. Remember, you promised Cherry. 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 Chakawa, pack some things, some pretty things. I'm going to Seattle.
shouldn't say such things about Freddy. He's too big a man to stand in the way of your deal. Oh, too big for me, eh? You're not jealous of Freddy. Well, why shouldn't I be? I know your father wants you to marry him. Dear Boyd, if your heart's really set on going away, leaving me... Oh, don't say it that way, Mildred. It's for us. If Freddie Marsh is really stopping your deal, I'm sure Father knows something about it. And I'll speak to Father. Oh, it won't be asking help. It'll only be telling him to call off his dog. Not that way. I won't ask any favors. But you won't be. I will. Just leave it to me. Come on, let's forget it. And dance. Shall we? You know, going out with you always makes me feel something wicked's going to happen. I hate to disappoint you. <laughs> I'm sure you won't, Tom. <laughs> Same old Cherry Malott. You haven't changed a bit. You haven't changed a bit either, have you? Still got your apartment now? You ought to see it. Hmm, I wonder. Let's have a showdown, Tom. What's holding up this Emerson deal? Marsh? It's tougher than that. It's Marsh, backed by Wayne Whalen. He's told me to lay off. Taking orders, Tom? And I'm afraid you have changed after all. I've taken orders only until I had a chance to talk with you. It's up to you, Cherry. All right, let's talk business. Are you stuck on this fellow, Emerson? <laughs> That's funny. Me falling for a young fellow like him? He doesn't even know I'm in town. That's how crazy I am about him. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I didn't want to see Emerson make a chump out of it. Say, that boy hasn't got a crooked hair in his head. Why, he's the cleanest, straightest. I thought so. No. You aren't stuck on him. You lied to me, Cherry. Lied like a gentleman. Let's get down to cases, Tom. Kind of pretty, isn't she? Some society girl? His girl, Cherry. On the level, Tom? She's Whalen's daughter. That's why Whalen's blocking the deal. I suppose he thinks Emerson isn't good enough for her, huh? Not rich enough. And he's trying to keep him from getting any richer. Are you going to let him do it, Tom? It's up to you, Terry. I guess I had a hunch all the time there was a girl somewhere. I'm afraid I didn't want to believe it. I'm darn sorry, Terry. Don't be sorry for me. I'll get along. You've handed it to me right on the chin. But I had it coming. Well, let's get out of here. Where'll it be? How about that apartment of yours?
Hey, what's the idea? Why don't you learn to talk over a phone, you big lug? Who is it, Dave or a guy? Hello? Who? Oh. oh, oh. Emerson gone out? Yeah. Two hours ago, all dressed up in them funny pants for riding horseback. He's gone out. I don't know. No. More bad news, I suppose. Someday, Boyd. Every day like this. Only we'll ride my horses, not your father's. Now don't grumble and spoil our little breakfast. Telephone for Mr. Emerson. Hello? Yes, this is Emerson. What? No. You really mean it? My board of directors decided, after all, to approve the loan. Well, I don't know how to thank you. Don't thank me. And I really can go ahead? Oh, that's just wonderful. Thanks. Goodbye. You did it for me. And I thought you hadn't even seen your father. But I haven't, I... Fibber. Lovely little liar. How else could it have happened? Happy, wasn't he? He's like a big boy. I dare say he thinks he did it himself. That's the way I want it to be. I don't understand you, Jerry. You want me to weep on your shoulder? Just because he doesn't like me, it doesn't change him, does it? He's a nice boy. You're a mighty good loser. Don't weaken, old man. That was our bargain. Emerson gets the 200,000, and you get my copper mine. My word for it, it'll make you rich. What are you going to do, Cherry? Do? I think I'll head back to Calvick. This little scrap's just started. He may need someone who knows how to fight. Maybe fight dirty. aren't you? How's it going? Oh, just great. Machinery's all in, the traps are set. It's up to the salmon now. The fish will keep their date. Oh, I'm gonna win this time, Cherry. Sure you are. For her. Oh, I've got to. For her. Well, I have to be getting down at the dock. I'll see you later. We're only three weeks, and he's got that old cannery of bolts all ready for the run. He's sure a hustler. A lot of good that'll do him. I'll stop him, listen, if I have to. Remember what happened to Bolts Putnam and Sitka, don't you? We don't want no more killings. Don't worry, we won't have any. the nerve to come to my camp. It's only a friendly visit. 
Once I offered you my advice. And I told you what you could do with it. So you did. But I am patient. And I came to advise you to get out of Alaska before you're shipped out. In a box. <laughs> you don't scare me a little bit. We don't like competition, you know. Well, you're gonna get a lot of it. Just the same. I've got some awfully good men. Well, before your men get me, I'll get you. I don't hire men to do my dirty work. No, it's a pity you haven't the same scruples about women. That was a neat little trick you pulled on Tom Hilliard with a woman. You leave Mildred's name out of this. Mildred? I assure you I wasn't thinking of her. Well, then what are you talking about? Such a nuisance, really. It's touching. I'm sorry you won't listen to reason. Too bad. Look at that. There's a trap. Ain't that pretty? Well, all I can say is a lot of trouble to go to just for canned salmon. Salmon's is fine eating. Guess you were never in the army. I picked this place because I know where the salmon's run, they'll come here. I know. I think it's that he talks to the fish. Now, Marsh is gonna make trouble. I figure he'll send out men with nets to stop our salmon. Can he do that legally? Sure he can, legally. But we don't catch salmon with lawyers. My gun here got some bad news. My gang is quitting tonight. Quitting? Well, they can't. The salmon are coming any day. I know that, but they quit just the same. Mr. Marsh promised more bigger wages. But we made a contract in Seattle. Well, I have to give you another licking. By golly, I think this time I lick you. But we don't fight. Mr. Marsh gives them all money. What? You won't fight? Scared, eh? Huh? I always thought you was yellow. Won't fight like a man. Getting sissy. By golly, you can't say those things. I fight. You hear that? I fight. This time I lick your soul, you have a funeral. You poor lopsided sausage. Tonight? Uh. In the woods yonder? Uh. As soon as it's dark. Uh. Now, don't you worry. They've got to work if I lick Swenson. And I'll beat the ears off him. Sure. Swenson won't last more than an hour. Look here, Balt. I won't let anybody fight my battles for me, understand? Now, you let me handle that lop-eared slanthead. Quit, huh? I'll show him. Either I fight him or there won't be any fight. Sure. Good hard muscle. Big, too. But, ah, uh, you don't know how to fight dirty. Well, I'll fight him fair. Swenson, fair? <laughs> maybe. Maybe I could learn you now.
Larkin, you tripe-eat old he-goat. There ain't going to be enough left for you to plant. You better kiss him goodbye. I'll kiss you, you goggle-eyed galoot, with a hat. <laughs> Ready, kid? Turn him loose. Don't forget the lead fish. <laughs>
And don't think I'm stopped because Emerson whipped that idiot Svensson. I haven't played my last card. Got you dealing off the bottom of the deck, though, haven't they? I came here to give you fair warning. And I'm getting it right back to you. You lay off the boy, Marsh. Give him a chance. I'm giving him a chance, and I'm giving you a chance to clear out before I run you out. We're not leaving. Very well. You've made your choice. If that trap is operating tomorrow, I'll send out my boats and wreck it. That means someone will be killed, Marsh. You know, that's exactly what I was thinking. I give them their chance. Send out the boats. Send them out. Do as I tell you. It's Marsh's fleet. I knew he'd try it. Spence. I'm going aboard. And get word to our men out there to come ashore. Fred Marsh coming out in the launch. He'll explain, no doubt.
Come on, get on. You can't get on this boat. Get off. Get off. What's the meaning of this, Emerson? I think you have the decency not to come here. See here, sir. You can't. Please, Boyd. Not here. I wish to speak with Boyd, Father. Alone. Brawling like a street tough, attacking Fred Marsh's men. Did Marsh tell you that? And did you believe him? I believe what I choose to believe about this and about the woman with whom you are so, well, friendly to be polite about it. I mean Cherry Malott. Cherry? But she's... Everything's sweet and refined and decent, I suppose. Perhaps that's why you never told me about her. Why? I didn't think you'd be interested. Rather lame, Boyd. But I found out about her. How you brought her back with you. How you sent her to Hilliard. You know that's not true, Mildred. Pretty shabby, wasn't it? And such a woman. A hanger-on in men's camps. A that's a lie. You choose to call me a liar to defend it's her? It's lies, I tell you. Cherry's my friend. I rather gathered that. A very dear friend. So very dear that you came to me from her arms. Yeah, I won't let you say things like that about her. I'll bring her here. She'll tell you. Do you think, really, I'd be interested in the type? Meanwhile, of course, our engagement... Mildred! Mildred, you don't mean that. You can't. Where is she? She went away. Don't lie to me. Where is she? Where'd she go? She went away last night in a boat with Clammy up. Come on in. Tell me the truth about Cherry or I'll choke it out of you. Sure it's true. What of it? Does that keep her from being a regular fella? That kind of a woman. Cherry's all right. They don't make them no better. And I never knew. Oh, no. You never knew. I don't suppose you even knew why Hilliard give you that money all of a sudden. Did she really do that? Don't tell me you didn't. Why, we all knew that. Even Bolt. Sherry went to Hilliard and, well, uh, the next day you got the dough, didn't you? down here from Nome. And you ain't told me yet what for. Don't you worry, Queenie. I'll tell you in plenty of time. I hope it's something exciting. It'll be exciting, all right. It should be after that long trip. Just like old times, ain't it? You bet, Queenie. Only you never used to smoke cigarettes. Oh, I'm going to the dog something terrible. <laughs> going to have company? Hmm. Ain't that nice? One of the local girls, Cherry. High-toned wench, ain't she? Private, eh? Oh, excuse me. Queenie's one of my old friends from Nome. Quite a type, isn't she? Isn't she, though? Have a cigarette? I want to talk with you. Well, go ahead. We both speak the same language. Just a couple of dames in love with the same fellow. Then you are in love with him. I might as well go. 
I can't use the same methods you use to hold him. Why not? Something in your book of etiquette about that, too? When I love a man, I don't need any rules. Obviously. I shouldn't have come. I might have known your sort. You don't have to put me in my place. I know about me. Just like Queenie. Only I managed to get a better break. I'm not interested in your confession. Not a confession. It's a boast. You can have Boyd Emerson for all of me. Oh, no, I can't. Boyd could never forgive me for being, well, for being Cherry Malotte. Can you blame him? No, men being what they are. And women of a certain type being what they are. You don't know my sort, but I can see through you like a window. And not such a clean window at that. You listen, sister, and you like it. Let me... <coughs> I love Boyd. I'm not ashamed of it. There's nothing to be ashamed of, no matter what you think in that dirty little mind of yours. If I'd wanted to hold him that way, you'd never have seen him again. I don't want to see him again. I won't take him from you. You take him because you've been taking things all your life. I offered to share everything with him. Sure you have. There's a name for the man who take that kind of money from a woman. And you lied to him. Let him believe you fixed that loan with Hilliard. You mean to tell me that he didn't know you did that and how you did it? You talk to me like that? You? Why, you? Oh, don't be scared. I won't dirty my hands on you. I'm Cherry Malotte. They know about me from San Francisco to Sitka. My reputation's got marks on it I couldn't rub off if I wanted to. I am what I am. I don't know how they finally settle things in this world or the next. But when the day comes, I'll stand there with my chin up and take what's coming to me. And I wouldn't trade places with you, you white-livered, sweet-smelling hypocrite, if they gave me a one-way ticket to hell! Now get out of here. I'll send him to you, and I hope you're happier than you deserve to be. Get out! Now, don't you start shooting off your lip. Kid. You know we've been at it 30 hours straight? Get to your buck. Not while you're still working. I'm quitting in an hour myself. Better turn in. You need it. Go on. Don't touch me. Do you know what they're saying about you? About me? I can guess. It's not true, Cherry. Tell me it's not true. It's true, all right. I thought you knew. Everybody knows about Cherry Malotte. Do you think if I'd known that I'd have accepted your help? Why not? I didn't ask you any questions, did I, when you came here broke and ready to quit? You weren't so fussy then either. Well, that's good But it's not too late. Go back to her. She won't have me. Not since she knows about you. She's gonna marry Marsh. No, she's not. She'll forgive you. I know, Boyd. You know. What can a woman of your kind know about her? You. Let's not start calling names. 
I'm just a little tired myself. Oh, you don't want names, huh? That truth hurts, doesn't it? I'll name a few names. You're nothing but a... Well, you certainly named a few names, all right. And I could have loved you. Could you, Boyd? Don't touch me. Yes, I could have loved you. That's the kind of a fool I've been, thinking you were a pal, helping me find myself. I've found myself, all right, and I've found out about you. You killed every hope I've had. You lied to me. You cheated me. Why ought to... crying about, honey. No guy is. No, I guess not. Knowing that doesn't help much, does it? And the funny part is, of course, he's really in love with you. Did you hear what he called me? Say, I'd rather have the guy I love talk to me like that and think he meant it than talk refined and poetic. And no, he didn't. He meant it all right. If he wasn't crazy about you, would he go to all that trouble to tell you how much he hates you? It's true, though. If you weren't so stuck on him, you'd see it in a minute. Oh, us girls. May I suggest an explanation, madam? You're going to get it, mister. And don't call me madam. And that ain't all you're going to get, daddy. I apologize to all of you. There's been a misunderstanding, and I'm afraid it's mostly my fault. But I'm going to square it. Don't weaken, kid. I'm told Miss Wayland is engaged to Fred Marsh. And I just want to tell you that she isn't. She can't marry him because... It's a lie. It's a rotten frame-up. Why, Freddy, darling, how you talk. You see, Marsh is already married to Queenie here. Why, I never saw her before in my life. I tell you, it's blackmail. Better straighten this out, Marsh. Why, I... I thought she was dead. <laughs> you mean you wished I was dead, but I ain't. And I got the marriage certificate and everything. Of course, such things can happen, but not to my daughter. I'm sorry I had to do this this way. Be good to him, won't you? You're very certain, aren't you, that I'll have him? Just two dames, stuck on the same fellow. I'll send him out to you. Don't let him go again. Goodbye. Hold it, fella. Cherry. Let me go. Let me go. I tell you, I gotta find Cherry. You found her once and you were a fool. I know I've been a fool. I ain't gonna handle it, you hear? A bad woman? Cherry? Ah, oh, she's worth ten like you. 
You want to go somewhere, huh? Well, go. Go hide your hat. Go to that pale-faced, namby-pamby girl out there in the yacht. She's your kind. You don't deserve no better. But, Bob, don't talk to me. I'll throw you. Oh, baby, what a blow. Cherry's out on the yacht, and she's gave Marsh the old run around. Hey, listen, let us speak, will you? Marsh is leaving town, and it... Say, listen. Well, what the... That's Marsh's boat, ain't it? Where is she? You told me she was here. Here I am, boy. Waiting. Oh, boy, dear, dear boy. Let's forget what's happened, I understand. You still believe that Cherry and I... Oh, she'll forget, too. That kind forgets easily. Some other man... No, you don't understand. I don't think you ever understand. Don't talk, Boyd. Just take me in your arms. I'll forgive everything. She's the one I've got to ask to forgive. Put your arms around me, Boyd. The yacht's moving. Oh, we're going home. Boyd, you can't leave me. I won't let you. Just sit tight and keep your eye on that Emerson outfit. I'm only dropping down the coast till this blows over. Shove off, you pig! Now what's the matter? get over it. Sure, I'll get over it. Boyd. Boyd. Because you're sorry for me. Sorry? For you? Oh, forgive me, Cherry. There's no past, no yesterday. Only tomorrow and tomorrow. Oh, Cherry. I love you so. 